Hello and welcome to Postcards, Lord Wandsworth College. Um, I've done several of these before and I'm going to put the links down below. Um, this is exclusively looking at a book I'd never seen before, but I, I, I sent for from the college and at last got it back. Um, they were a bit slow to send it, that's all. Um, it's called The History of Lord Wandsworth Foundation and College. Now, to be honest, I didn't realise that foundation and college meant absolutely everything. Um, so in a way, you could look through this book, which is by Hugh Podger. Um, and it's about £15 in paperback, and about twice as much as that in hardback. And they, 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 if you send for it from the college, they add two or three pounds on for postage and packing, which is fine by me. Um, and it, 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 it is fairly detailed and obviously I could uh, compare it to the similar publication by Bill Fryer which takes the history up to 1968 but um, Hugh has obviously looked Bill's book over he wouldn't not and uh, added uh, a considerable amount um, and covered the same period but but also conti continued right through to 2009 and I assume it came out in 2009 or 2010 let's have a look I didn't get it at the time. It came out in 2009, so um, there we are. He he has a different writing style from WLF, uh, whereas Bill Fryer was more anecdotal. Um, Hugh Podger is more factual. Um, I think both, both publications uh, still stand on their own merits. And um, I wouldn't draw any unfriendly um, comparisons between the two, except to say that this is obviously far more up to date, although now, of course, ha, 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 it's um, 12 years since it, it came out and uh, a new one in theory would be needed. Um, it contains an enormous amount of photographs. I mean, let me show you some of them. There we are. Most pages would have some. There we are again. I mean, this is nothing I've prepared. It's just uh, the way it is. There we are again. And finally, here we are again with Neil Henderson joining the staff. C.A.N. Henderson was my headmaster, um, and we called him, he knew that I'm sure, the MASH. Um, in 1968, the split of foundation, college and farm. In other words, there's a farm joined on, Hyde Farm, and uh, that in itself became independent. And at one time, the boys would have been expected to go over there and, you know, milk the cows or put down, put up the fences if they'd fallen down or kick them down and then put them up again if they hadn't. But now it became purely academic and also obviously sporting nature here's the farm again profitable in this period making a surplus in all but one year no fundamental changes in the operations this is late 60s the poultry farm closed in 1970 after 50 years so just in time for me to get there so uh, 1973 they received an offer of 24,000 pounds but it was rejected in 1979 James Random suggested that it should be sold while retaining shooting rights. Well, so if James Ramsden did shoot himself, he's only himself to blame. Here is Neil Henderson resigned as headmaster in 1982, uh, shortly before his 50th birthday. I know that he found it very difficult, latterly. I'm not going to say anything. He passed away three or four years ago. I'm not going to say anything disrespectful, 
but in my time he was a very very good headmaster um, but I know even uh, I caught the tailwind of, of uh, some problems that he had and even I felt uh, sorry and also to be honest alarmed um, but I was leaving the college uh, if not in disgrace then having not fulfilled any of their hopes for me and also my hopes for me but there we are it deals with scholarships here another step taken was the establishment of scholarships the trustees in november 1968 asked neil henderson to bring forward proposals for introducing academic scholarships which they said could be financial out of an increase in fees of perhaps 10 pounds per annum <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking money, and I quote this ad nauseum, the amount of money that my father would have paid for my fees in 1970 and the amount of money you paid now for to be a boarder in the senior house um, would be a hundred times the amount. My father would have paid uh, 340 pounds or something like that. And now it is 34,000 pounds. So, uh, yeah. Get out of that if you can. Here's Sir William Gavin. Photograph, I'm sure they've appeared in numerous sewers. There he is, the old chap. And of course he gave his name to Gavin Hall. And here's some people swimming in the junior pool, which I helped paint once with Andrew Matson and Nick Turner and John Matson, and possibly one or two others. I can't really remember. We, we drew faces on it and then we, we painted them in and stuff, things like that. Um, here's some pictures of Sutton House interior barn. It's very superior looking. There's no point in the, there's the barn. I mean, that says nothing. But, well, I say it says nothing. But here, if you look at this, if you said you lived there, I think people would look and look again, wouldn't they? That's rather fine. And that's within sight of some football pitches and where I went about five years ago for the um, LWC Guy Fawkes. It was five pounds to get in and uh, it's up by the sports hall, which is up by Sutton House. They talk about various aspects of things which obviously you wouldn't necessarily think of now. And one of which was on the outbreak of the Second World War, what were they going to do? And what we're going to be seen to be doing, which isn't quite the same thing, with masters who were conscientious objectors. But they're an extra school, I should think. Um, and here is a pig. Young Farmers with David Wollstenholm, whom I just remember. He was the first, when I was in the first form, uh, I think he may have still been there for one year. I think he was. It was his daughters who uh, used to cheer us all up in plays and things. And here's Mr. Irving, chemistry and second master. And I remember him walking past and walking about slowly as I walk now. And he appeared to be if not quite from the Victorian age, then a Harold Millen, Millen impersonator. I said, uh, which form are you, sir? Form one, sir. Well, keep the noise down, please. And there's the old headmaster, Sandy Henderson. There. It's only quite small photographs. I mean, you probably, it's as much for reference as for adulation. You don't have to... Uh, And here's Gosden House, which I've seen, but I have to say, now, if I drove past and was driven past in the car, or even was walking from the station, as can sometimes happen, I can't really pick it out. I'd be interested to know if it's still called Gosden House, or if it's in private ownership or whatever. Here's Arthur Webb in Shepwood House. And here's all the boys setting out for the all-shot tattoo. 
from 1933. I can understand that the mindset of many of the masters who would wish to instill discipline in the boys was heavily influenced by the fact that the First and Second World Wars often came as disruptively as, as they came frighteningly into their lives, leaving marks, good, bad, and indifferent. This is about 1930 to 1943, Colonel Little. You see, you can snatch a name out of history and write a chapter about him. I've never even heard of him. I mean, he might have been a headmaster. Following a report to the auditors, the trustees decided on a reorganisation that separated the duties of the warden, secretary and farm manager. You can see because it started life as, a, as an orphanage, and then it became an agricultural college, and then it became a public school, and now they call themselves an independent school. Well, they know what they're doing. And she's, after all, in the same setting. She's very charming. Colonel Julian leading corpse on church parade. And of course, the CCF was compulsory in my time. There it is. And I'm glad it was. And I think now there's a new house, Julian House. Is the woodwork teacher whose name was Archibald Pussy Watson. I think if my name was Watson, I'd want to make it elementary, my dear Watson. I mean, it's just me. Here's some of the Gosden girls. What a cheeky lot they look. There they are. This is quite a big book, I mean, uh, to summarise this in one sitting, as I'm attempting to do. It's over 330 pages. Um, pretty good standard index. And uh, it's got an appendix, list of trustees and governors. Going up to, see if I've heard of any of these people. Ronnie Coulson, who was, uh, who is, who was, wife of uh, Peter Coulson, Sir Peter Coulson, the judge, of course. An aerial photograph of the campus. Not that good, but nice to have it, if you see what I mean. And uh, a picture of the then headmaster, Fergus Livingston. I think went up to Iceland or something. There he is. Perhaps he has an Icelandic wife. There's a review, establishment of the foundation in 1912, purchase of the estates and the first buildings, entries of the first boys and girls in 1920, Creation of the school, the Sandy Henderson Gavin years, Neil Henderson Frito years, introduction of girls, brief Guy Waller period and the in power period, and so on and up to date. Here we have the governors at the, at the time of printing. And they look at approachable and modern lot to my old eyes it would have been my contemporaries i suppose none of them i knew personally but i don't know was long gone so make a lot of difference yes yeah, so johnny wilkinson the rugby international that won england the world cup i can't remember the exact year actually 2003 or something like that and here's Ian Kerr, who won the OBE for, uh, for the CCF. 
Drums in the Park, 2005. I was due to go to that. As usual, I lost heart. The park was um, up by Sutton, I think, again. Playing the double bass. Yes, music has been encouraged there. Five hundred and fourteen boys, comprising one hundred and twenty in junior house, and eighty per year thereabouts. Well, when I was there in nineteen seventy-four, the last full year, I know that there were three hundred and thirty-three boys in the school. So there you are. Here is one of the newest houses, Haygate. It's a bit pale, but I'm going to determine to show you. Anyway, that gives you some indication that this is, uh, well, built to a slightly unusual style. They obviously had a free hand. I mean, they've got the, ro the room up on the campus at the block and all that surrounds it. And this would not be where they would be taught. This is where they would live and recreate if it, indeed they have a even at half a moment away from the games fields. More talk about the farms already described the farmers changed to an all arable. I think that means wheat and barley and crops. That's interesting. Under the management of Pennywell. And the farm employees were reduced to one. Well, don't uh, overdo it, you know. It's, uh, remember my cousin, Jane Pratt, from Hillside Farm Odium, telling me that, you know, one time 80% or something of every, everyone working has worked on the land, and now it's about 1%. There's an architect's drawing, proposed music school, and astroturf pitches. Yeah. I very much enjoyed the music at the college. I still sing. It's in public, thank God. Thank God. But uh, I still sing. And uh, even though I don't make the best of noises because I'm a bit rusty or whatever, um, I still get enormous fun out of it. I think that's the way it should be. This is Mr. Guy Waller. He has a French name, a French middle name. He was a head of chemistry and a housemaster. Keen sportsman. Uh, man. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. And there is Mr. Dodd. He has also passed away comparatively recently. I haven't checked the dates. I met him once. He was very kind. He invited me up to stay to uh, uh, have a look round. I didn't go, but uh, I'm sure he would have welcomed me, and I think that's important. There were a load of cricketers having won a little trophy. That's nice, isn't it? Appealing for more money. They're always appealing for more money. You know, wishing to expand this and, ex and extend that. There's Alice Emery, who was the matron, and she hoped to become matron of all the houses, but she didn't quite make it. Here's Mr. George Warner, who was peg leg, wasn't he? And uh, the boys would hear this. I wonder if it was a ghost or an apparition, or just somebody going like that. And obviously, they couldn't work out which it was, and uh, you know, they were off to a flying start when it came to comprehension. There's a picture of more recent people, like Mr. John Matson and Mr. Tony Woolstone. 
longer serving than Ducky James, T.H. James, one time editor of the school magazine, and David Wilsonholm, newcomers, Alan Dyson. Yes, he was my uh, history, it's not again, he was my English and maths teacher for the first two years. Ian Kerr, who taught us history, George McLennan, who did maths. In 1972, Tony Woolstone, languages and schoolhouse tutor, and Peter Booth, Hazelveer tutor. And John Merriman took over as head of English. As far as I'm concerned, he still could be inside my head. And I hope, even that's a bit of a backhanded thing to say, they're not disrespectful. I hope that he would like to think he's passed away several years ago down in Brighton, but nevertheless, he leaves a legacy. Sports activities played an important part in the curriculum. The monastic lifestyle. For the first part, life in college was monastic occasional school dances, awkward affairs with a few girls from the village, sounds good, or from local young farmers clubs. A few boys used to cycle to the nearby village of Lower Froyle for riding lessons. What on, horse, on horses, that, that is, don't get the wrong idea, there, where there was some contact with girls. Say no more, squire. There was no television and carefully chosen films. Will Hay. So, well, if you did want to know where Mr. Porter or even the goose stepped out, there was your chance. There was no awareness of sex that was, a perm that was to permeate later generations of young people. No awareness? I bet there was. His Twelfth Night being performed in 19... 46, shortly after, probably Shakespeare hadn't even written it then, probably raced on and said, sorry, I haven't even got most of these parts, you know, just say anything, uh, with Hugh Podger, who is the author of this book, which I'm enjoying despite my comments. And here's Sandy Henderson with the staff, obviously, which was very modest. In size, though not in aspiration, I'm sure, all in ability. And here's a picture of the old bursar, Kenneth Williams, who was, for some years, not that long, my uh, neighbour in Odium. He lived in King Street, and I've lived in several houses in King Street. And he was also friends with my mother, which uh, she had her up no end. She worked at the college for a very short time and liked it very much. Well, I've laughed and joked, but this is a serious-minded book. And if you want to buy it, I hope that you do, as much out of curiosity, then I recommend it. Maybe you'd like it in hardcovers. Thank you very much for listening. This has been an independent view of uh, this Excellent book. Thank you very much. Goodbye.